good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Harrison Blount. I'm the Associate Dean and Director of Allied Health um, at the University of Buckingham Crew Campus. And today um, I want to talk to you about uh, our Allied Health programmes. Specifically, um, I would like to speak about our BSc in Podiatric Medicine. And additionally, um, I would like to talk about our upcoming programme, uh, which is nutrition, um, specifically around health and exercise. So the structure of the webinar today is that we will discuss those two programmes, um, a little bit more around podiatric medicine, um, because there is some overlap, uh, because we are within the same school. And then we will have 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end um, with myself and my colleague from the Podiatric Medicine uh, program as well. If you do want to ask questions, there is the Q&A option and there is the chat option. So please um, put your questions into those and then we will look at answering those um, at the end. So there will be time to do that. So we're based at the Cheshire campus in Crewe. Um, which you can see diagrammatically there. So it's a 40 acre campus in Crewe. You know, it's a really big site um, and we have accommodation just across the road. Um, so our booth hall accommodation sits within a two to three minute walk from the campus itself. It's a 10 minute walk to Crewe station. So the transport links are absolutely superb. Um, from Crewe, you can get up to Manchester, Liverpool, Chester, um, if you're interested in, in visiting those places or that's where you reside and you want to travel to us to Crewe. And also, we're only 90 minutes or so from London on one of the direct trains as well. So we're in the centre of the country and it's really, really accessible to get to us um, from wherever you are. We're organised under the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. So uh, this faculty contains all of the allied health programmes, the, the health sciences programmes, our pre-med programme and our medicine programme. We are within the School of Allied Health and within that school, we currently have the Department of Podiatric Medicine and the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics that we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to start with podiatry and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this programme. So as I've already said, it's run by the School of Allied Health and all of the programme is situated on the crew campus. OK, so the programme is fully equipped to be delivered from this campus only uh, and there's no requirement uh, for it to be streamed or for you to move in between here and Buckingham. Our ethos on this campus is all around interprofessional learning. So you will study alongside um, our biomedical science students, other allied health students and our medical program to make sure you get a real feel for what it's like um, to study and work alongside those people who ultimately you will work with once you graduate. What we also can claim is that we're the first ever two year accelerated degree programme in podiatric medicine. So there are 13 other schools of podiatry across the UK, which you may have visited, you may have been to open days for, but we are the only programme that offers a two year accelerated programme. This means that you will do exactly the same amount of content uh, as you would do at any of the other schools. It means that you will have exactly the same amount of placements and contact with patients. The difference is that you will not get a big summer holiday because we fill that summer holiday with work. And it means that you can graduate and get out into the workforce an awful lot quicker. So podiatrists sit under the banner of Allied Health and Allied Health is the third largest group of practitioners uh, in the NHS. So there's about 150,000 um, Allied Health professionals um, across the UK. 
um, and they come from many, many different disciplines. So, you know, podiatry, dietetics, paramedics, uh, radiographers, physios, et cetera, et cetera. So there's 14 professions in all, podiatry being one of them. There's currently about 13,000 podiatrists registered with the Health and Care Professions Council in the UK, and a small uh, amount of these work in the NHS. So it's around 3,000 of those who work in NHS practice. So when you come onto our programme, as I've already said, it's a two year full time degree and it starts in September. There's over a thousand hours of clinical practice. So this is a requirement from the Royal College of Podiatrists that you must meet a thousand hours or more to um, graduate from uh, an accredited programme. We have on-site and external placements throughout the Northwest and West Midlands. So we are currently developing our on-site clinical facility that will deliver services to both NHS and private patients but we will also expect students to be placed in and around um, the university at different NHS trusts um, to make sure they get the full range of experiences in those clinical environments. You'll be taught by podiatry academics and clinical educators, and that's all in partnership with our local education providers. And if you successfully complete the programme, you will be given a BSc honours, in podiatric medicine. You will then be eligible to apply for registration with the HCPC, which is our regulatory body. Um, so you can register there as a podiatrist and that is a protected title. You can only apply and be eligible for that title if you have completed an accredita accredited degree program. And alongside that accreditation comes your annotation to access to prescription only medicine administration, and prescription only medicine sale and supply. So there are various different ways um, that you can access our program. And um, a few of these are up on the screen. I've covered the main um, eligibility criteria and entry requirements for the program, uh, but there are many more and there are many variations depending on where you're coming from in the world and what your previous experience is. All I can say is if you don't match anything that's on the list here, our excellent admissions team have an additional list, a really extensive list of other programmes um, that you may be coming from and might wish to um, explore as possible entry requirements. So the best thing to do is get in touch with the admissions team and they will be able to guide you through um, your eligibility and what else you might need to do um, or whether you can um, apply for the program direct. In addition to um, the core um, entry requirements, um, we will have um, an English re language requirement for our international students, uh, which is slightly higher than some other programs in the UK, um, but certainly it maps to all healthcare profession programs in the UK. We also ask you to um, comply with our satisfactory health assessments. Okay, um, This is to allow you to go out into the NHS and complete the placements. And in addition to that, we will ask you to do the UK disclosure and barring service or have an equivalent in place. And again, the admissions team uh, can help to guide you through all of those requirements before you come and join us on the BSc Podiatric Medicine Programme. So what we're looking for. Now, ultimately, we have those eligibility criteria um, and those academic requirements that we would like you to meet. But ultimately, that's not just what we want from you. We're looking for people who have an interest in science, have an interest in medicine, and more importantly, have an interest in working with people. So we want people who are compassionate. We want people who have got experience of working in a team, either from you know, previous work experience, from your A-levels and projects that you've done in the past. We want people to be able to demonstrate understanding, so sympathy and empathy, uh, and bringing all of those experiences you have and applying them to the programme and how you might manage a patient. 
We want people who are keen to help others. Podiatry is a service. We provide a service, whether it's in the NHS or via a private practice to our local communities. So you've got to be keen to help others because ultimately that's what the job pins on. It pins on our ability to um, be working with people and working with our community communities. We also expect you to be a good communicator. OK, and that's not just with the patients who you will see, that's with your peers on the programme and that's with the academics and clinicians who will work with you. We also want to find people who are analytical. Working in medicine or healthcare is all about problem solving. OK, patients present problems. The organisations present problems. OK, your peers the people you work with present problems. So having that analytical mind to work through the different stages to come up with solutions is a really good attribute to have uh, before you come on the programme and certainly one that we can develop while you're with us. So this is the course timeline. So for those who don't meet our entry uh, requirements for direct entry onto the BSc programme, we do have our foundation year. So our foundation year is studied at level three and it's over two terms. OK, and if you're not eligible for the BSc, our admissions team will uh, direct you to our foundation programme where you can go and get all of those things that might be missing. So this is about developing all of those academic skills OK, and bringing you up to speed if you've been out of academia for a while, or it may be improving your knowledge around the basic sciences of biology, chemistry and physics. And it puts you in a really good starting position um, if you're not coming from traditional entry requirements or you've been out of education for a while to kind of get up to speed and ready to step on to the next part of the programme, which be entry onto the BSc Honours PodMed. So the Podiatric Medicine program is split over five, uh, three levels, so levels four, five, and six, and they progressively get a little bit more difficult and a little bit more challenging as we go through, because we expect you to be moving from a novice when you come and join us at level four to a competent practitioner by the time you leave us at level six. As you can see, those levels are split into eight terms over two years. So there's four terms in each year. And the studying in those terms is around 11 weeks with a couple of um, variables at term four and term eight. Nine weeks of those will be contact time. Um, so that is uh, studying at a, a modular level. Um, with the academics and clinical educators. There is then a period after that of revision and assessment, okay? And it also fits in some holiday time as well. So we try and fit in a small break at the end of each of those terms to allow you to just recuperate a little bit, go home and visit family and friends, and then come back refreshed, ready for the next term. So two years if you come to us directly, three years if you need to access the foundation programme in the first instance to join us. So what you will study. So this is a little bit more detail of those three levels within the programme. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these one by one. And if you have looked at other podiatry programmes uh, across the UK, some of these uh, modules will seem pretty familiar. Uh, the core curriculum is set by the Royal College of Podiatry. So we have to adhere to that um, in the same way as we have to adhere to the requirements of our professional regulator, uh, the Health and Care Professions Council. So there are some things that we can't move. What you will see from this is the podiatric medicine modules. So there are two at level four, one at level five and one at level six. OK, so pod med one, two, three and four. Now, these are the patient contact modules. OK, so pod med one is your pre clinical skills. OK, so this is getting you ready and safe and competent to come face to face with patients and then pod med two is your in-house clinical learning. 
Um, so you will be in our in-house clinic and you will be providing treatments under supervision to members of the public, okay? You will be taking responsibility for those patients, but as I say, you will be supervised all the time, okay? So it's nothing to fear, but the key is what we want is you to be face-to-face -face with patients as early on in the program as possible, because this is where you're going to apply all of those theoretical modules. It's face-to-face -face with patients in those real life situations. Once you move on to level five, you will again take on all of these theoretical modules, which have practical built into them. And at the end of that, you will go on to PodMed 3, which is your first clinical placement. So you will go out for around seven weeks into the NHS and work alongside our clinical educators and local education providers, again, rotating through the different specialisms, putting all of this knowledge into practice. And that's the same for level six. PodMed 4 is that final opportunity to go out and now you'll be working much more autonomously with a light touch from the clinical educators, but they will be expecting you at this stage to take a lot more responsibility for those patients that you're seeing. We have some core themes that run through the uh, curriculum. So core medical knowledge, which is your basic sciences, uh, and basic underpinning medical knowledge that you can apply to practice. Professional development and lifelong learning. So all of the levels are supported by a portfolio that you take out into clinical practice and that integrates all of the theory that you're doing with the work that you're doing live alongside patients or in a simulated environment. Research. So research is embedded at all of the levels, more specifically in evidence-based practice, research methods and design, and at level six and at the end of level six, the opportunity for you to produce a research dissertation, either via a clinical audit, uh, a literature review, or um, a real life uh, project collecting data and presenting that. Clinical skills, we've already mentioned, um, that theme of the podiatric medicine modules that runs through the levels. And then that ethos that I talked about earlier about multidisciplinary team working and interprofessional education. So we make sure that through these modules, you get the opportunity not only to work with peers doing other programs in the university, but when you're out of those clinical placements, you get to work with multiple different disciplines, experience what they do as healthcare professionals and see how that might apply to what you do studying podiatric medicine. And one more point on there is the leadership and innovation in practice module. So this is quite unique in the UK within, is embedded within our podiatry programme. Ultimately, the destinations for podiatrists are hugely variable. So what this module does, it prepares you for either practice within the service industry, okay, or practice within um, a private practice arena. So it helps to build some of that business acumen that you might require alongside building some of those leadership skills that you may need if you go into um, the NHS. So podiatrists, um, you know, the primary aim of what we do is to improve and maintain mobility, independence and quality of life uh, for all of our patients from birth right up until old age. So whether you're coming straight from school or you're coming in as a second career, your time studying podiatry will be really exciting uh, and a really challenging journey. And ultimately that process is preparing you for some of these potential graduate opportunities. So there's lots of scope available to a podiatrist once they graduate. And what we are not looking for is those students who just want to graduate and you know work very very simply doing the role of you know a, a, a foot care assistant what we want is students who want to graduate and really push the boundaries of what we can achieve as podiatrists in the allied health arena and by doing that you can go and work in the nhs okay 
and there is a career framework in place in many NHS trusts for allied health professionals, uh, both in hospital and community care, but also in a management role. So many podiatrists have gone on to manage podiatry teams, but also taken that next step and gone on to manage multidisciplinary teams or even uh, move into different areas of hospital management. You might take a completely different route and go down uh, the route of being a business owner, running a private practice. OK, so many graduates will leave you know, with their business plan that they've created as part of that leadership and innovation module. And they'll go out into the world and they'll set up a really good private practice. And, you know, they will be selling those services to patients and really extending their scope of practice, maybe as a generalist, doing all of the areas of uh, podiatry that can be applied, or as a specialist, maybe in the arenas of vascular medicine, or musculoskeletal medicine and sports injuries, um, you know, the, the choices are really wide. Some people choose to move away from podiatry and take those skills and those transferable skills into medical sales. Um, like myself and my colleagues here at the university, some people like the idea of taking on medical education or the teaching route, and they become a lecturer or a researcher working in a university. You may not want to set up your own business, but you might want to become a self-employed locum working in private practices and private hospitals or working as an associate podiatrist um, alongside um, a, a private practice that has you know, multiple chair clinics across the country. You may want to go and work overseas. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for podiatrists to go and work, um, certainly in some of the Commonwealth countries such as Canada, Australia, um, and New Zealand, but you may want to go uh, further afield with voluntary organizations and work in the Middle East, in India, or even um, uh, Asia. You could become an NHS consultant podiatrist, so you might want to stick with that clinical role, drawing in a little bit of teaching and research um, and manage a team of podiatrists. And you may want to take a specialist route. So rather than working as a generalist, you might want to become a specialist practitioner working in surgery, in sports, or with high risk patients with diabetes or vascular problems. So the destinations are multiple. Um, but what I can say to you is you are pretty much guaranteed employment following gradu graduation. If you graduate well, and you've demonstrated all of those attributes that we've already talked about, then there are gaps in the workforce at the moment for podiatrists to get a job. And at the moment across the UK, 96% of podiatrists get a job following graduation. So I just want to take um, a step back from podiatry now and just talk a little bit about our nutrition programme. So our nutrition program is brand new. So at the moment, it's up and coming, okay? Um, so we are at the moment still developing some parts of this program, um, but it is set to start in September, 2020. So like the podiatry program, it's a two year full-time degree with a September start. And again, although there is not a prerequisite for this, we have built in a thousand hours of practical experience that you will get because again what we like to do at the University of Buckingham is not just expect you to sit in front of a, um, a powerpoint all day or sit in a lecture all day what we want you to do is be putting those uh, theoretical bits of knowledge and understanding that you've learned into practice and making sure um, that you can apply them to uh, the populations that you'll be working with. Again, we'll be using our on-site clinical facilities for access to patients. Um, and we also have our biomedical sciences labs where you can get hands-on um, with some uh, of the basic sciences in biochemistry and biochemistry and nutrition. And we're developing our external placements at the moment, again, throughout the Northwest and West Midlands. You'll be taught by nutrition academics and clinical educators. And on successful completion of the programme, you'll gain a BSc Honours in Nutrition Science and you will be eligible to apply for registration as an Associate Nutritionist 
with the Association of Nutritionists. Our entry requirements, again, I won't read them all out because you're capable of doing that. This is just the core entry requirements as we discussed with the previous programme, but ultimately, um, our admissions team, as I said before, I've got a list of other entry requirements from those of you who may be coming with uh, with non-traditional um, eligibility. So please get in touch with the admissions team because they will be able to guide you through um, and make sure that you're getting all the answers uh, to find out if you can join us uh, to start our BSc Honours Nutrition Programme. So nutritionists provide evidence-based information and guidance uh, about the impacts of food and nutrition on health uh, and well-being of humans, both uh, as individuals and as a population. Uh, and they often work alongside uh, nurses uh, and dietitians. And ultimately, it's an excellent career option if you're interested in science, health, sport and working with people. Um, you know, all of these allied health programmes are patient facing um, and we need these similar kind of attributes that I've previously discussed to make sure that one, you have the potential to take these on board when you come onto the programme. Um, but we also want to develop all of these key attributes um, before you get to the um, stage of graduating with us. So the course timeline is very similar, okay? So we are looking at that same two year accelerated program, okay? And the terms are split up in the same way as the previous uh, podiatry program. Um, there's no real difference. And what this kind of mapping allows us to do is it allows us to build in those interprofessional learning opportunities. So as I say, it's over those two years. If you don't meet the eligibility to criteria to come onto the programme directly, again, you can go into our foundation year, you can build up those academic skills and those core skills in science. And once you've hit that 70% mark at the end of that foundation year, that 70% pass mark, you will then be eligible to join the programme. So a whole mixture of uh, different modules to prepare you for working either with individuals or populations. Um, we expect, as I say, you to have an interest in science or food and nutrition. Um, we expect our students to really have an ability to motivate others because of the type of work um, that is expected of you once you graduate. It's really key that you have an understanding of people and their lifestyles and that you're able to explain complex uh, things very, very simply because it's very much an educational role that you have. The modules, again, they build in complexity over levels four, five and six. And you will notice that there is some overlap in these modules with what we've already talked about in podiatry. So, for example, uh, the modules Health and Behaviour, Applied Anatomy and Physiology, Evidence-Based Practice, Research Methods and Design, Leadership and Innovation in Practice, and your research dissertation will be studied alongside your podiatry colleagues, but also as our other allied health programmes come on board in the future, there'll be an opportunity to study alongside those as well. So they are modules that span the school and are not just specific to that particular discipline. Where that specific element comes in is again in those uh, practical modules that we have built into each level. So fundamentals of professional practice, applied nutrition and dietetics and contemporary nutrition in practice are the modules at the end of each level where you'll be applying all of those nutrition specific skills into uh, that patient facing role. So this is where you will apply all of that theory into the practical application uh, of, the, of the job. And again, our five longitudinal themes within the curriculum stay the same because we want to push all of these as our kind of key um, opportunities for people. 
um, and really expand those uh, not only profession-based skills but also those transferable skills that you'll be able to employ to the profession or other parts of your life. Again, multiple career options available once you graduate as a, a nutritionist. You could work in a health setting such as a community clinic and again working alongside nurses, dietitians, uh, maybe within the NHS. You could be a business owner running a consultancy or practice. Uh, lecturing in academia or working in research, teaching in schools or colleges, working in the food industry. You could specifically be working with sports and exercise, specifically with public health or in a development and in international public health nutrition role. So again, the career options are variable. Um, the salaries generally will start in a public sector role at around 15 to 25,000 pounds a year. Uh, but in private sector roles uh, can exceed £50,000 a year uh, quite easily. Um, certainly if you're working with um, elite sports people, um, exercise consultancy or in a major uh, kind of international public health role. So I'll just let you read through this. I'll just give you a minute. This is one of our Crew Campus students um, and they're actually have just come to the end of their program. But as you can see, what they're really talking about there is those things that we can offer you that you may not get in other places. We are unique and we are innovative in how we've built these programs. We're not trying to copy anywhere else. That key aspect of getting people into the workforce earlier is really important to us. But what we don't do is um, we don't compromise on quality and a two-year program isn't for anybody it is going to be challenging and it will be intensive but ultimately if you can step up to the plate you're going to become a really good clinician at the other end of it so we want you to keep in touch and i just want to tell you and finish this presentation just by saying why us um, we've got really strong um, heritage at the University of Buckingham for our small teaching groups. What we want is you to have as much contact with those academic members of staff and those people who you're going to learn from um, throughout the programme, as much contact as possible. And the only way we can do that is by having small teaching uh, groups which allow you to ask questions in a really comfortable and non-challenging environment. OK. As I've said before, the accelerated program um, allows you to get into the workplace much quicker. We have that ethos of interprofessional learning, which will allow you to work alongside those people in your undergraduate career as much as you will work with them when you graduate and go out into practice, wherever that destination might be. We also uh, have innovative assessment methods. So um, although you are taught in a modular fashion, our assessment methods match the best practice that we see in our medical school, which is that of synoptic. So instead of being assessed on a modular basis in those individual subject areas that we had up on screen earlier, what we ask of you is a, to do a synoptic assessment, which integrates all of those things together. So ultimately, what you will be doing is bringing elements of all of those different modules into those synoptic assessments which allows us to test you on all of those but you are applying it in those modules in the same way as you would apply it if you were working and in front of a patient or a client from a nutrition perspective we've got our on-site clinic um, and as i say that will be treating nhs and private patients so from week five of the podiatry program and from the end of uh, term one in the nutrition programme, you'll be working in those live and simulated environments. The other thing is we have a spiral curriculum and that fits in with our synoptic assessment strategy because that spiral curriculum means that you will revisit things that you've done earlier in the programme over and over. So you don't forget them and you can constantly apply them. So when you do graduate with us at level six, 
you are ready for that workplace, no matter what it might throw at you. So we can move on to some questions. I'm going to just stop sharing my screen to allow us to do that um, a little better. OK, I don't know if any of my colleagues have been monitoring the chat. Uh, will there be a crew campus tour after this? So what you are... Oh, I've answered that, Mike, sorry. Oh, perfect. So, Thank so, you. So, sorry about that, but I can I can repeat actually because it's important for the students yeah. to uh, to know. Sorry to interrupt. Um, the um, so yeah, we won't offer a virtual campus tour today, but um, you can uh, you can book a um, an in person campus tour actually um, if you email tours at buckingham.ac.uk or if you go on uh, our website, uh, you have a section called Campus Tours and you can book your tour there. And one of our student ambassadors we uh, will take you around the campus. And uh, if they're available, you will also have a chance uh, to uh, to meet our academics on that day. So uh, yeah, if you want to um, uh, to enjoy your campus tour, uh, please yeah, email us uh, tours at uh, buckingham.ac.uk. Uh, thanks, Corinne. And and obviously on those campus tours, we'll we'll make uh, every effort to um, answer your questions and um, and uh, you'll be able to have a chat to some of the the academics working on the programs. Do you have any questions from anybody else? Would anybody else like to put anything in the chat or in the Q&A box? I can't believe I've done such a good job that uh, you I've did. You did. Questions. You see, you answered everyone's questions, <laughs> so it's uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Well done. Uh, just just one more thing, sorry from uh, from me actually, but um, we have uh, we have a video of um, about our crew campus. Uh, we uh, we finalized it recently. So uh, yeah, if you want to um, to go on YouTube, uh, the University of Buckingham, we have a channel. So go to our YouTube channel, and uh, you will be able to find uh, our latest video about uh, about crew as well. You may see some nice nice pictures of the campus. Uh, I put the link as well in the chat. So if you want to uh, to click that link, it will take you directly to that video. So um, just a. I know we've got a little bit of time left, so just a couple of kind of um, FAQs that we've had before that we might not have mentioned. Um, so uh, those of you who want to go and work in, in the NHS, um, you know, a, a standard working week in the NHS is, is about 37 and a half hours. Um, but um, the public sector working is really flexible these days. So, you know, if you if you have um, dependents and, and, and you need more flexible hours, um, you know, it's uh, it, it's really accessible. I know colleagues of, of mine in the past have just worked for school hours. So they've done kind of 10 till half two um, so they can do drop off and pick off um, for their for their children. Um, so that's, uh, you know, it, it's a real benefit of working in that environment. And then obviously you've got the benefit of working for yourself as well. Um, so apart from the hassle of having to do your tax return every year, um, private practice working is really flexible too, either as a business owner yourself or working alongside somebody else who's already in practice. Um, and, and lots of those hours are negotiable um, and they can be negotiable so you can actually work evenings and weekends um, to kind of fit around um, your, your family life. Um, we often get asked about earnings, and I know I talked about it for nutrition, but I suppose I should fill the gap uh, from a podiatry perspective. So uh, a newly qualified podiatrist generally uh, joins on the um, agenda for change scale at a band five, um, which is usually around, uh, it, it, it's just over £24,000 um, a year, which is, uh, that's outside of London, it's slightly more um, inside of London. And then as you move up the bands, that goes from a scale from that 25 to 28 to 35 and then 35 to 42 as you move up to band seven um, but then you start to get into the advanced practice um, arena and consultancy posts which can be up to uh, 90 to 100 thousand pounds a year so you can make a really good um, career and like I say that framework is in place in the NHS to either move you through to those consultant and specialist roles or you might want to take that other path of going through kind of the team leader and management roles. 
uh, slightly different in private practice because it's all dependent on how much work you want to put in. So in a single chair practice where you might be working with yourself and a receptionist, maybe with a podiatry assistant, uh, you know, you could be work, you could be earning anywhere between 50 uh, and 100,000 pounds a year. Um, there are colleagues of, um, of, of mine um, who actually have got multiple practices, so three or four practices within a particular region um, or across the country um, or even working down on Harley Street in London. Um, and uh, their kind of salaries will uh, and incomes are, are topping out at kind of five hundred thousand pounds plus. So, you know, if you're willing to put the work in uh, and certainly in the kind of private practice arena, as with all of these things, you're generally going to um, uh, earn more in the private practice sector than you will in uh, the, the, the public sector. But, you know, it, it's all representative of, uh, of the work that you put in. Um, I suppose the other thing to mention is, um, and I know in the, the medicine um, uh, webinar earlier, uh, it was um, it was mentioned about scholarships. So there are no scholarships available for um, the allied health programmes. But uh, what there is, is the NHS um, Learning Support Fund. So um, anybody who's coming on to a uh, an allied health program such as podiatry, uh, it doesn't apply to uh, nutrition, I'm, I'm afraid, um, but anybody who's coming on to podiatry or uh, physio, paramedic studies, et cetera, et cetera, can apply for uh, that learning support fund money through the NHS. Um, and that's about £5,000 a year. Um, and it can go up to eight because there's a few different um, uh, other areas that you can apply for. So if you have dependents and you need support with childcare, some of the small and vulnerable professions, such as prosthetics and orthotics and podiatry is one of them, there's an extra thousand pounds available. So it, anywhere between five and 8,000 pounds can be applied for. If eligible, uh, you will get that to put towards your tuition fees. So I hope that helps with a little bit more information um, on uh, uh, on podiatry. I'm just having a quick look at the Q&A section and on the chat. Yeah, we don't seem to have any uh, any questions. Um, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, I can't see anything. So I'll, I'll just ask again, any participants want to pop anything in the chat before we, we draw to a close? I'll just give you a couple of seconds. I can't see anybody typing. No, in, ca in case you have uh, any more questions coming after uh, after that session, because sometimes we uh, we don't really think of the of the question during the session, please feel free to email us at info at uh, buckingham.ac.uk and then we will forward your uh, your questions to uh, to Mike. OK, so uh, thank you for all those participants who've uh, joined us. We look forward to um, your inquiries with our admissions team and um, and hopefully at some point getting a chance to uh, to chat to you. Um, and, and just to thank you to kind of Corinne and the, the support team who've um, helped us to put uh, this uh, this open date on today. So thank you to you and your team, Corinne. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, thank, thank you very you. much. Have all a nice best. day. Bye. Yes, you too. Bye bye.